Today's video is all about Easter dinner recipes. And maybe you're just not sure what to make, or maybe you're looking for some new ideas. Well, I have got you covered. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing seven delicious recipes you can make for your Easter dinner. This video is extra special because it's part of a collab hosted by my very sweet friend, Sammy May, and co-hosted by myself. I'll have Sammy's channel linked below, along with a playlist full of Easter dinner inspiration. And I'm telling you, that playlist is going to be amazing, so be sure to check it out. Okay, y'all, let's get into these Easter dinner recipes. This zucchini squash and corn casserole was a new favorite. To begin, in a large skillet, I added two tablespoons of butter, along with one large diced onion, one and a half pounds of thinly sliced zucchini, and one and a half pounds of thinly sliced yellow squash. Now this is a pan full of veggies right here. It's a little hard to stir at first, but after they cook for a bit, it gets a little easier. And you're just gonna saute these for about 10 minutes, just until they're tender. And by the way, I've been a little bit under the weather, but I just had to get these recipes to you, so you'll just have to bear with me. Hopefully my voice will be back before too long. These are about tender now, and the recipe didn't say to drain this, but there was a whole lot of liquid in there. So I removed them from the heat, and before I took them over to the counter, I poured them into a strainer and drained them very, very well. Now over in a large bowl, I added in those drained veggies. I just love squash. I love it all. I love zucchini, acorn squash, butternut squash. You'll have to let me know below what is your favorite. I also added one teaspoon of minced garlic and three cups of frozen corn. I did let that sit out for just a little bit, just to thaw out. I also added one and a half cups of shredded white cheddar cheese, along with half a cup of sour cream and half a cup of mayonnaise. Well, I was supposed to add one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper here, but I forgot. <laughs> You'll see at the end. So just go ahead and make sure you salt and pepper this. Next, we're going to add in some breadcrumbs. The recipe called for fresh breadcrumbs but I just added in about a cup full of crushed Ritz crackers. I also added two beaten eggs along with a handful of shredded Parmesan cheese. Now you're just gonna do your best to stir this until it's very well combined. And I had to switch to a big metal spoon here because this little rubber one just wasn't doing the trick. Okay, I've got this all mixed together and I'm ready to pour it into the casserole dish. I'm using a 9 by 13. I probably should have sprayed it with some nonstick spray, but I didn't. Now you can go ahead and pour in that mixture. Get it all in there and get it all spread out. Of course, we gotta make up a topping for this. <laughs> in my small bowl here, I have two tablespoons of melted butter, about a cup full of crushed Ritz crackers, and about a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. Just give it a good little stir to make sure everything's coated in that butter, and then we're gonna pour it on top of the casserole. And yeah, I just find it easier to just dump it all in and then spread it out. It looks like I wasn't wasting any of that topping there. <laughs> And yep, I started to put this thing in the oven, and then I realized I forgot to add the salt and pepper. <laughs> Better late than never, I guess. I'm telling you, I was under the weather. I'm still under the weather, and I just wasn't using all my brain on this day. So I just added some to the top, and I tried to stir it in a little bit, but I should have probably started a little more, but I didn't, and it turned out just fine. Thank you. 
Okay, and now this goes into the oven to bake uncovered at 350 for about 45 minutes. Y'all, this casserole was absolutely amazing. It's a new family favorite, and it's definitely something that we'll be making regularly for all future holidays. And even better, you can make this the day before, assemble it all except for the topping, and just refrigerate it until you're ready to bake it. And right before you're ready to put it in the oven, you can just mix up that topping and sprinkle it over the top. We all loved this one. We all gave it a 10 out of 10. And I really hope you give this one a try. I think you'll love it too. This mushroom rice casserole may not sound like much, but it was out of this world good. You'll need an eight by eight inch baking dish. This is like a one dish casserole. I added one cup of uncooked long grain white rice, along with one can of beef consomme and one can of the French onion soup. Oh, and about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I had some spinach on hand that I needed to use up, so I went ahead and added a couple handfuls here. And I'm so glad I did. I also threw in a little minced garlic. And of course we gotta add in some mushrooms. So I added about eight ounces of thinly sliced mushrooms. These are just the little white button mushrooms. Now give all this a really good stir. I did try to tap everything down just a little bit to make sure everything was down in that liquid. Before I put it in the oven, I'm topping it with about four tablespoons of butter. I just sliced it up and placed it evenly on top of everything. Now I'm gonna cover this tightly and I'm placing it in the oven to bake at 425, covered for about 40 minutes. And after about 40 minutes, you're gonna remove it from the oven, remove that full, and sprinkle it with about three tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. You could also do shredded. The recipe just said to do grated, so that's what I did. And I just eyeballed it, so add however much you like. Now this is going back into the oven, uncovered, for about 15 more minutes. When it's done, you're just gonna give it a good stir and kinda fluff it up. And that's all there is to it. This is ready to serve. I had seen this recipe on TikTok and I've been wanting to make it for a while, but I hesitated just because it just seemed like just mushroom rice, but this was outstanding. I'm so glad I made it. By the way, if you're new, I always have the recipes either linked or typed out in the description box below. I mean, I knew this recipe would be good, but it really blew my mind. It would be perfect for Easter dinner. I just wanted to jump in right quick and say, if you're coming over from the playlist, welcome. My name is Valerie, and I'm so glad you're here. I post easy recipes like this all the time. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way you get notified of all my future videos. Okay, y'all, back to these recipes. We love these Cheddar Bay biscuits. They're even better than the ones you get at Red Lobster. Before I get started, I melted half a cup of butter, that was one stick. I melted it in the microwave. Now I'm gonna set it to the side so it can cool for just a bit while I start on the biscuit dough. In a large bowl, I added two cups of all-purpose flour. You're also gonna add in some baking powder and baking soda. I like to sift mine just to make sure there's no lumps in there. And that was two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda. 
Next, you're going to add in one teaspoon of granulated sugar. This does not make it sweet. It just balances out the flavor. Also, three-fourths teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and one-fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And time for the cheddar. I always add in extra cheese. The recipe calls for one cup, but I added one and a half cups because cheese just makes everything better. Am I right? Give it a good stir and set it to the side. I grabbed that melted butter. It's cooled down by now. And to that, I'm adding one cup of buttermilk. Then you're going to give it a really good stir. It'll look a little lumpy, but that's okay. That's how it's supposed to look. Now grab your dry ingredients and we're going to add this melted butter buttermilk mixture right on in. I'm going to stir all this together, but just make sure you don't over mix it. Just mix until you don't see any more dry flour left. Okay, this is ready and I'm using a baking sheet for these. And to make it easier, I'm using a big cookie scoop. This is about a 1 4 cup cookie scoop. This makes it a lot easier and hey, at least the biscuits will all turn out the same size. And I usually get about 10 or 11 biscuits from this recipe. Now these are going into the oven to bake at 450 for about 12 minutes. You'll know they're done when the tops start to turn a little golden brown. And while those are in the oven, we're going to make up a butter sauce to brush on top when they're done. In a small bowl, I mixed up three tablespoons of melted butter, about three-fourths teaspoon of garlic powder, and half a teaspoon of dry parsley. Now stir all that together, and the biscuits should be just about done. Here they are, out of the oven, and as soon as you take them out of the oven, you'll want to go ahead and brush on this butter sauce. I'm telling you, this just takes these biscuits to the next level. I've made them so many times and they're just so good. And you gotta have some kind of bread for the holidays. And for us, it's either yeast rolls or these Cheddar Bay biscuits. Now don't get me wrong, we love yeast rolls, especially my sister. But these are just so much easier to make and they have so much flavor in them and everyone loves them. By the way, has anyone ever had any luck with freezing biscuit dough, homemade biscuit dough like this? I would love to be able to just bake up a couple at a time. This Tuscan mac and cheese was kind of an experiment for me. I started out by boiling up one pound of shell pasta according to the directions on the back of the box, but you can use any kind of pasta you want really. I've always made my mac and cheese with an egg and evaporated milk. But this time, I wanted to try it by making a roux, the cheese sauce with the flour and butter on the stove top. So while that pasta is cooking away, over in a large skillet, I added one stick of butter. I let that completely melt down. Then I added half a cup of all-purpose flour. Just whisk that and let that flour cook for about a minute or so. Then I added one teaspoon of minced garlic. I gave that a little whisk. Now we're going to add in two cans of evaporated milk. I'm going to add this a little at a time. Just make sure you whisk it constantly. I add about half a can and whisk until all the lumps are gone. Then I do that again until I've used up both of those cans of milk. This is going to be the cheese sauce for the mac and cheese and you want it to be smooth and creamy. After you get both of those cans in there, you're also going to add one cup of regular milk. I'm just using 2%. Whisk that and you're going to let this cook for a few minutes until it's thickened. And now it's time to kick it up a notch. I'm adding one teaspoon each of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And also two teaspoons of paprika. Next, I'm adding half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, and I did chop mine into small pieces. I chopped them really good because I just didn't want big chunks of sun-dried tomatoes in this mac and cheese. And this is optional, but I did decide to throw in about three cups of baby spinach. 
I did tear mine into small pieces. I know it looks like a lot, but after it cooks for a little bit, it looks like it kind of disappears. And now for the cheese. I'm adding four cups of shredded Colby Jack cheese. That was one of the big 16 ounce blocks. I also added half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. That was just about the rest of that bag, so I just dumped it all in. You can go ahead and turn this heat off and just stir it until everything is combined and that cheese is completely melted. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat and head over to the counter. I'm using my pretty large nine by 13 baking dish. It does have very high sides. First, I added in that cooked and drained pasta. Then on top of that, I poured in that cheese sauce. Now you're just gonna do your best to stir this until everything is well incorporated. And listen, this is mac and cheese, and in my opinion, you can never have too much cheese. So I'm topping it with two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. Now this goes into the oven to bake at 325 for about 20 minutes, or until that cheese is bubbly and lightly golden brown. This was amazing. I am obsessed with the Tuscan flavors, and I thought, why not incorporate it into mac and cheese? The seasonings, the sun-dried tomatoes, the spinach, really took this mac and cheese to the next level. Y'all have to let me know in the comments below, what is your absolute favorite side dish to have for the holidays. Our dinner is not complete unless we have some form of mac and cheese. This was delicious. This smothered broccoli gets gone every single time. I'm starting out by cooking up a half a pound of bacon. I just cut that into really small pieces and I let it cook until it was done but not crispy because it'll continue to cook in the oven. When that's done, you can remove it from the heat, let it drain on a paper towel, and then you can cut it into smaller pieces if you need to. Now over to the counter, I'm gonna make up a sauce to pour over the broccoli. In a measuring cup here, I have four tablespoons of melted butter, and to that, I'm adding one third cup of brown sugar and one fourth cup of low sodium soy sauce, and also two teaspoons of garlic powder. Then you're gonna stir it until it's well combined. And by the way, I do want to apologize to y'all for having to listen to me like this. I do have several videos that I want to get out now, so y'all may hear me like this for about a week or so, but hopefully before too long, I'll get my voice back. So this is a smaller dish, and I really wanted to use it because my Mima gave it to me. I think it's a 7x11. That broccoli fit in there, but there was just no way I was going to be able to stir everything. So I had to find something else. I ended up transferring it all to my big nine by 13 casserole dish. And I love this one too, because my husband just bought it for me. So, and this worked out just perfect for this recipe. And that's three small heads of broccoli. I cut the stems off and then cut those florets into small bite sized pieces. I know it looks like a lot, but it does cook down quite a bit. After I got that broccoli all situated in there, I sprinkled over that cooked and chopped bacon. And that was a half a pound of bacon. And if you love bacon, feel free to go ahead and add in the whole pound. Next, I'm drizzling over that sauce that we made up just a little bit ago. Then you're just gonna kinda toss this around until it's all mixed together. It doesn't have to be perfect though cause I take it out of the oven halfway through and give it another really good mix. 
and it's a lot easier to stir after it's cooked down for a little bit. And I let this bake in the oven at 350, uncovered, for a total of 40 minutes, stirring halfway through. This broccoli is so, so good. We love broccoli, and we love it any way you want to make it. And it's actually our favorite veggie to serve alongside our weeknight dinners. You'll have to let me know what is your favorite veggie. And by the way, if you want to, you can totally reduce the sugar in this recipe and it will still be just as delicious. Sometimes you just get tired of the traditional broccoli casserole and just want something a little different. This is amazing. This cheater carrot cake is going to be perfect to make for Easter. In a large bowl, I'm adding one 15.25 ounce box of spice cake mix. I would say to use a carrot cake mix, but the only carrot cake mix I could find is the Betty Crocker, and they've reduced their mix to 13.25 ounces, so those do not work for this. To that cake mix, I added one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, half a cup of melted butter, three eggs, one cup of milk, and an eight ounce can of drained pineapple. You'll wanna drain this very, very well. I also added half a cup of sweetened shredded coconut, half a cup of finely chopped pecans, and one cup of finely shredded carrots. And I'm gonna use my mixer to mix this until it's very well combined. Now this is done. I'm using a bunt pan, and I think this is a nine and a half inch. It's a Wilton. I did grease mine with Crisco, and I sprayed it with my favorite nonstick spray, the Baker's Joy. I just did not want this cake to stick. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure you could use two of the eight inch or nine inch uh, round pans to bake this into a layer cake. I'm sure that would work out just fine. Just pour in that cake batter and kind of move it around where it's in there nice and even. Now this goes into the oven to bake at 350 for 40 to 45 minutes or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. When it comes out of the oven, I like to let it sit here and cool for just a few minutes, then I flip it out onto a cake plate. This one came out perfect. You know, sometimes you just never know. I find that they come out a little easier though if you don't let them sit in the cake plate too long. After that cake has completely cooled, I'm going to make up a cream cheese icing. In a large bowl, I added one stick of softened butter, eight ounces of softened cream cheese, about two teaspoons of vanilla, and four cups of powdered sugar, and a pinch of salt. Now you're just gonna mix this until it's smooth and creamy. Now you can spread this on with an offset spatula if you want, but I like to do it with a popping bag and a large circle tip. I like to kind of make it look a little bit like the nothing bunt cakes, but you can do it even like theirs. You can make the drips even, or I kind of like it like this, kind of uneven. To me, it makes it look a little more homemade. I also sprinkled on some chopped pecans. This cake is out of this world good, and it's so easy to make, and everyone always has a fit over it. The pineapple and the coconut really give it so much flavor, and I love the crunch from the pecans. But if you have a nut allergy, or maybe you just don't care for pecans, you can leave them out and it'll still be delicious. 
What is your favorite cake to make for the holidays? I had to make carrot cake for Easter, but we typically enjoy chocolate the most. We absolutely love this cake and I really hope you give it a try. I seen these Mississippi mud potatoes on TikTok and I knew I had to try them. I'm using my large baking dish. I used about seven russet potatoes. I washed them, peeled them, and diced them into big chunks, kind of like potato salad. And this is kind of like a hot potato salad. For the seasonings, I added Badia Complete and a little salt and pepper, but you can add anything you like here. Next, I added a teaspoon of minced garlic along with one pound of cooked and crumbled bacon. I cooked it until it was done, but not super crispy. You're also going to add half a cup of thinly sliced onion. I was going to add it all here, and then I decided to only add half, so I ended up only adding about one fourth of a cup just because I knew some people would be eating it that I knew weren't crazy about onions. Next, add in two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And I told y'all this was gonna be like a potato salad. <laughs> You're gonna add in one cup of mayonnaise. You could start with only half, half of that, and if you stir it and feel like you need to add more, then go ahead and add it all. Now you're gonna mix this until it's well combined. I couldn't just leave it like this. I thought it needed a little more cheese on top, so I went ahead and added a little extra cheese. So some of the recipes said to cover this and some said to bake it uncovered. So I decided to cover it for half the time. So I let it bake at 325 for about an hour and I took that foil off halfway through. You just wanna let it cook until those potatoes are nice and tender. This was so good, and I just kept it simple, and I topped it with some green onions, but you could really top it with anything you like. Those green onions just add a little something extra to it. And we actually had this for dinner on this night. My husband loves potatoes, any kind of potatoes. Mashed potatoes, potato casserole, potato salad. He just let me know that I had to make this again. By the way, I have Easter desserts and more sides coming soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes. Oh, and be sure to check out that playlist and I will see you in the next one. I am hungry. My tummy is growling. My girl, Sammy Mae. <laughs> okay. In today's video, I'm sharing six, oh, seven, I'm sharing seven. Looking for my voice, where did my voice go? Can you tell I'm under the weather? Seven, guess who's back? Back again, I am back, I am back.